We have here today Brad Miller, the president of Encore Multifamily. Brad's been in this business for a number of years. Has he himself, through his various companies, have developed over 20,000 apartments. He's going to tell you today about the things he's learned in his career and some unique things that have changed in the multifamily business and looks like gives us this bright horizon for the next 10 years. With that, Brad Miller. Thank you, Rick. I appreciate that very much. Good evening and welcome to Encore. We're glad that you're here this evening to join us. Uh, tonight we're going to ask the question, apartments, good investment? We're going to attempt to answer that question right away. Um, first, let's look at the macroeconomic drivers that um, greatly influence uh, a lot of business, especially the apartment business. Consumer confidence, business confidence, um, uh, GDP, inflation, those kinds of things. Job growth, of course, is important to all businesses, especially apartments, population growth. And then we're going to talk about the impact of the surge in single family building. First, let's talk about consumer confidence. As you can see from the slide, the consumer confidence is starting to uptick after a uh, protracted drop due to the last recession and credit crunch. Uh, I want to point out the uh, vertical shaded areas represent the previous recessions, and you'll see how consumer confidence has dropped substantially during those times and how it's picked up after the recessions have ended. Next, we want to talk about business optimism. Uh, business optimism is uh, starting to creep back up. Uh, that's important because uh, when businesses are optimistic, they spend their capital for capital investment and also hire, which is important to our business as well. This next slide uh, reflects the um, consensus opinion of a number of economists that follow the apartment business. And you can see that they show a steady increase in GDP slight increases in inflation, but a pretty substantial drop in unemployment, uh, which means they're projecting job growth pretty healthy over the next three years. Next, we see the U.S. job growth. That continues to um, increase. Again, uh, pointing out the vertical shaded areas are the recessions that go all the way back to 1940. I don't go back to 1940, but uh, I go back to a number of those recessions uh, nonetheless. The next slide is really interesting because what it does is it, it reflects the number of jobs that were created last year by, from young adults. Uh, companies are hiring young adults in the prime apartment renting years, 20 to 34. Last year, out of 1.8 million jobs created, 730,000 were of that group. So that's a pretty impressive number when you stop and think about it. Next, um, let's uh, take a look at single family, well, population growth next, of course. And you can see that's a steady line. So population growth combined with job growth really fuels uh, the success of our apartment business. The next slide is uh, interesting uh, because it shows not only the steady drop in uh, home building construction, but also the fact that it's starting to creep back up again. It certainly is not anywhere near its historical standards of a million five to a million seven units delivered per year, but it's starting to creep back up. And so one would ask, uh, what impact does single family have on uh, multifamily? Because typically over the years, uh, multifamily has been sort of a feeder to single family. You get married, and then the next thing you know, you're having a child, and you're moving out of your apartment into, uh, into a home. Uh, so we are starting to see some move out notices as a result of single family. But at the same time, with the uptick in single family prices, that's keeping people in apartments longer. Next, let's look at some pretty specific factors contributing to the success of the apartment business namely supply, demand, why people are renting longer, staying in apartments longer, and then we'll look at occupancy and rents and what that relationship looks like. First on the supply side, uh, this is really an interesting graph because nationally apartment developers such as us uh, contribute about 250 to 300,000 uh, apartment units each year. You see the dramatic drop due to the credit crisis, subprime crisis, that took starts w well below 100,000 uh, in 2010. 
For a while, I had the distinction of closing the last apartment loan in Dallas, Texas in October of 2008, and for 15 months there was not another loan closed. What that has done is it's shrunk the supply because each year in Dallas, we tear down seven or 8,000 units, okay? So that shrunk the supply and therefore it created a situation of pent-up demand. This um, that, uh, is a chart that was prepared actually by the economist for the National Association of Real Estate Investment Trusts and uh, that shows the pent-up demand uh, created back here after the uh, recession of, of 2009. He um, contends that we're 750,000 units below historical levels. And if all we can build is 300,000 units a year, then uh, it'll take a while to really catch up. So the risk of overbuilding is probably not in the near future for us. Next, uh, this is a chart again by the uh, economist for the National Association of Real Estate Investment Trusts. And uh, this is really interesting because again, I point your attention to the shaded areas, which are the recessions that go back to 1970. And I was part of that recession, so I've experienced each one of them. What that does is you see the dip in household formations and during the recessionary times and then post-recession, you see the household formations picking up steam and eating up that pent-up demand. Look over here after 2008, back in that area. That's a huge area of, uh, of demand. He contends that there are three million households in pent-up demand right now that we need to service through rental apartments. Can't possibly keep up with that in the near term. Ron Witten, who's a well-known uh, marketeer, and by the way, I'll, I'll stop here and say that these slides were a, were a collection of four of the prime market gurus in the apartment business. Uh, three of them happen to live in Dallas, Texas. Ron Johnsey of Axiometrics, a firm that we use very heavily in our research. Uh, Greg Willett of MPF Research, and then also uh, Ron Witten of Witten Advisors. Each one of those gentlemen has been our guest at our monthly board luncheon over the past year. So we've gained an awful lot of knowledge from their knowledge. So this, uh, this chart contends that there's 1.7 million households uh, in pent-up demand as opposed to 3 million as pointed out by the Nay Reed economists. The point here, I think, is that whether there's a million seven in pent-up demand or 3 million in pent-up demand, it's a huge number in the demand area that we're trying to supply and are unable to keep pace with. On the next slide, uh, this is really interesting because now we want to talk about why people stay in apartments longer. Diane Wren, now Diane Miller, and I got married in 1968, and you can see the average age of the female back then was 20, the average age of the male was 24. I was under that, of course. But look at the upward trend. Kids are waiting longer to get married. By way of personal example, our oldest son was married for the first time last summer, 37 years old, and his wife was 30 as opposed to the 21 and 20 that his dad and, and mom experienced. So that's a reason they're staying in longer. The uh, next thing, which is really sort of an unfortunate statistic, is the rapid rise in student loans. When I graduated from TCU, I had student loans totaling $1,500. The st average student loan balance of kids graduating from private universities today is $26,000. Those loans cannot be discharged through the bankruptcy. They're hanging around their necks like an albatross, and it takes a long time to pay those back. You cannot discharge them through bankruptcy. So they're having to stay in apartments longer because they can't save money for the down payment because they're paying their student loans. It's an unfortunate statistic, but it's good for the apartment business because it means that people are having to stay in apartments longer. Next, uh, this plots the relationship between occupancy and rental growth. And the point here is that occupancy comes first, rental growth comes second, but you can see that we're on the uphill tick of both occupancy and, uh, and rental growth as experienced uh, in all of our markets and all of our investments at Encore. So that phenomenon looks like it will continue for a while. Uh, this again shows the recession, the impact of the recession on rents. And yet over the last uh, two years, you've seen two to three years, we've seen 10.5% uh, increase in rents. Uh, in some markets we've seen even more than that. The next slide is probably one of my favorite charts. It's a scattergram and what this attempts to do is plot uh, the north-south axis is revenue growth, the east-west axis is job growth. 
You always want to be in the upper right hand quadrant of all scattergrams and this is no different than others. Look at the way up in the upper right hand corner. Those, those cities are San Francisco, San Jose, and Corpus Christi. And matter of fact, we're coming out with an investment opportunity in Corpus Christi here in the next few weeks. So Corpus Christi was the third highest in rent growth uh, over the course of the past year, 12 months, year over year. The, we're taking land positions now in Austin, Houston. Uh, I just came from Denver this afternoon. Denver's up here. Uh, just came from Denver this afternoon where we opened our clubhouse uh, this past week and we'll have first units to show residents uh, this coming weekend. Uh, we've already leased 22 apartments sight unseen. Um, and it's interesting to watch the leasing agents show them samples of what their apartment's going to look like. Our, hist our history has been people don't rent apartments until they see what they're getting into. So it shows how strong that demand is in the Denver market. We expect to do very well.